All right, guys, the time is finally here to get my thoughts on the Rouge Audio Class D amplifier. Get ready, this is gonna get juicy. Before I do this, please, you know the deal. Subscribe, hit that like button. I could not do this without you all, okay? So let's get to it. Rouge Audio, Class D amplifier, MSRP of approximately $1,700 coming from Italy. By now, you guys have heard the conversations with regards to uh, giant killers, amplifiers that are worth just a fraction of the cost of some of the amplifiers that I typically have in my room. You know, a lot of these amplifiers that I have acquired throughout the past few years have amplifier amplifiers that I have had the pleasure of owning now for some time and obviously give you all my honest opinion as far as how they sound and what they're bringing to the table. But of course, like anything else in life, people have always questioned whether more money really translates into just a better performing device. I took it upon myself to reach out to a lot of you guys out there who have special amplifiers that are you know, very, very affordable. And so I wanted to find out for myself if you've followed through with the last three videos that I have released. I think it's a very, very impressive presentation for Rouge Audio. Um, when we can actually compare an amplifier of this price point against something that I consider ultra high end. Now I know and I understand you guys do not know the monos that I was using on the particular shootout. What you need to know is these monos are 200 watts class A. They weigh probably 200 pounds uh, and uh, in my opinion they belong in the ultra high end tier group. So one thing I want you guys to keep in mind, and I want to make sure you guys are clear on this. You guys have a seat that is probably 10 to 15 feet away from the presentation. I am two to three feet away, okay? That's essentially what you have to think about. So a lot of the things that I hear in the room are things you guys are not going to hear, probably not even going to get close to hearing simply because of YouTube, the compression, the fact that you're going through the internet, then you have to stream through your devices. So there are a lot of things that you guys um, have to keep in mind, okay? There is a direct degradation of sound. That is a normal thing that happens, guys. But uh, listen, we gotta do what we can, right, through YouTube. That's the reality. You guys are at home, we have COVID still happening right now, so there is less of a uh, opportunity for all of us to get out there and listen. So what can you do? Resort to YouTube, resort to my channel, Jay's Audio Lab, where I have been constantly saying, nobody does what I do, okay? At least at this, at this level. And I'm very proud to continue to do this for you guys because I think you guys enjoy this type of content. Uh, I have seen a tremendous amount of um, support ever since I started to take on this challenge. And I want to thank you guys for this. So let's get to it. My thoughts. You guys want to hear them. So here we go. Three videos, two different presentations. Presentation one, in case you were wondering, was indeed the class D amplifier. Presentation two was my class A 200 watt per channel monos. Let's take a look at the poll so you guys have an understanding of how the entire world saw this. Here you go. Here are the three polls after a few days. You guys now understand where the whole world stands with regards to these two amplifiers. So it looks like class A has one for this particular exercise. And it should come at no surprise. Um, I have had several conversations, intimate conversations through email text messages with a lot of you guys who know me closely. And I would say that those who have the years that I trust, the hearing that I trust have also 
agreed that the second presentation was the superior presentation. Now I know, and I've read the comments, and I wanna to say to you guys, I read just about every comment that you guys leave me underneath. If you see a like to your comment, it's probably Jay giving you a thumbs up with what you said, okay? It's probably me. Some of you guys love presentation number one, although it was the minority, it still had a great following. And it should be no surprise, guys, absolutely no surprise that the Class D amplifier held its own against my crazy amplifiers here. Um, now, there are some things you guys need to know and understand about the, the shootout, the presentation. Number one, guys, I used a, I don't even know how much this uh, straight wire cable was the speaker cable i honestly had it in a plastic bin somewhere outside in, in, uh, in my patio um, and i dug them out connected them and we used that for the shootout so i can tell you right now the speaker cable was indeed a bottleneck and i'm going to answer the immediate question that you guys are going to have jay it's a speaker cable it should have never been a uh, obstacle with regards to our findings it should have never been a problem with what we found it's still a speaker cable that just transfers the information from point a to the speaker to point b okay well i'm here to tell you guys you are hearing and i'm not meaning to brag here i'm not trying to brag here i'm not trying to sound like i got it all you're hearing a system that is probably half a million dollars here okay so why does that even matter it's simple, guys. It's common sense. It's a system that is extremely revealing, guys. It's a system that is going to tell me if something isn't up to par. When all of my supporting cast, everything that I have here is some of the best components out there. And my last cable, the cable that happens to be behind the speaker, is not at the level of the rest. A lot of it gets lost. A lot of what happens gets lost, okay? A lot of what's coming in from my DAC, from my amplifier, from my pre-amplifier, from the power cords begins to get diminished by the inferior speaker cables. So yes, at this level with this system behind me, guys, it definitely makes a difference. That's, and as you guys know, I've been very vocal. I feel that, that the speaker cable is probably the most important cable in the entire system. Some may say it's the power cord. I can agree. I, I can, I'm okay with that sentiment. I'm, I'm not going to argue that. Uh, but we all know the speaker cable is very important. Unfortunately, guys, I couldn't use a transpa my transparent Opus speaker cable because of the fact that the spades, the terminations on the cable are too big, too thick for the binding posts of the Rouge Audio amplifier. So I had to make a call and I went with my straight wire speaker cable for the purpose of this exercise. Okay, another thing that you have to keep in mind. I also used a power conditioner, which is still in the process of breaking in. That, be, that being the Synergistic Research Power Cell SX. As you guys know, this is an incredible power conditioner, but to be fair, it was still in the process of breaking in. The only component connected to this preamp to this power conditioner was the preamplifier. It makes a difference again, one more time. I'm gonna say that it definitely changes the information. It changes the presentation. As a matter of fact, on the last video, in case you didn't notice, I went from using my undisclosed preamplifier to using a solution 725. I want to also say, in addition to that, that if you are expecting for a $1,700 Class D amplifier to come into your room and all of a sudden you can say, I have the same sounding amplifier as Jay's ultra high-end amplifier, you, you are in for a world of hurting. It is not the case, okay? This amplifier is gonna sound this way in my setup with all the supporting cast that I have, the speakers, the cabling. It is not going to sound that way in your room. I can assure you of that. It is not going to sound the same with average electronics. Let's keep it real. The average person that buys a $1,700 Class D amplifier isn't going to own the speakers 
that I have here isn't going to own the DAC that I have here. More than likely, they're going to have components that are hovering around the same price point as the Class D amplifier. There are some exceptions. I understand that. So I want to make sure I'm clear on that, okay? Do not expect for this Class D amplifier to come into your room and give you the presentation that you heard here behind, okay, uh, behind me. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Here's my findings from inside the room. The Class D amplifier, the Rouge. Very clear. At a first glance, the presentation is going to wow you. Guys, this, is, this should come at no surprise. This is exactly how Class D amplifiers sound. It's a very clear presentation, clean presentation. I have never owned a Class D amplifier that sounds dark. I personally haven't really had that experience with well-designed Class D amplifiers. So that is, that is a natural trait. That is something that you buy when you get a Class D amplifier. Usually, oftentimes, is a very clear presentation. There might be some amplifiers out there, Class D amplifiers, where this may not be the case, but for the most part, guys, understand this is, a, this is part of the DNA of a Class D amplifier, this clarity. When it comes to clarity, the first reaction that you guys are gonna get is, oh my God, I hear so much resolution. I hear a tremendous amount of information. I hear this clarity that may not be so apparent with the Class A Ultra High End Amplifier. And I'm agreeing with you. I'm not gonna disagree with you. Absolutely. When I sat down and I turned on this Class D Amplifier, I was like, okay, we are in for a fight here. This is interesting now. That was my first impression, keeping it real. As I sat there, let the amplifier go through the motions, I left the room, came back about five hours later. Music was playing the entire time. I decided to say, you know what? Let me go back into the room. And up until about midnight, I began to do my critical listening in order to give the Class D amplifier a fair shake, a fair opportunity to really shine. So what happened after that? I began to get my ears in tune with the presentation. My brain got locked in and I was able to go in there and extract what I consider are the qualities of a world-class amplifier. Now, did I find them in the Class D amplifier? To a certain extent, guys, I did. But it isn't perfect. I will tell you this. What's great about it Bass control, guys. The bass control of the Class D amplifier is incredible. As a matter of fact, guys, I feel that some of the best bass control I've had in my room came from a Class D amplifier, such as the Merrill Audio 118. Okay? Incredible control, amazing grip, and this amplifier also did the same thing when it comes to bass. It is just lightning fast really fast sounding, uh, it's really controlled, um, it's never sluggish, okay? And that is typically how Class D amplifiers sound. The biggest thing that I noticed, guys, here with the Class D amplifier is this clarity that also homogenized the presentation. Every song, in my opinion here, sounded the same with the Class D amplifier. Um, I felt that uh, nothing really stood out um, other than the speed and the control of the, the bass control. Um, but the high frequency guys in the mid range, in my opinion, was here. The classic amplifier was a few notches above that. Um, I felt that the high frequency extent extension wasn't as polished. It wasn't as refined. Um, at times, I even felt that it got to me, and this became quite noticeable when I gave gas to the presentation. When I pour gas and I stepped on the throttle, I felt that that's exactly when the Class D amplifier began to show its true colors. What do I mean by that? If you go back to the three demos, Focus on the congested areas of the presentation, the most complicated, the most complex, if you will, parts of the songs, and do an A and B right there. You'll be able to really pick apart 
the class D presentation, how it almost just runs over these complex passages in order to get out of these passages. And the class A amplifier literally walked right through it. It didn't really run. It walked on top of all these complex passages, trying to completely unpack everything that's there and serve it on a platter for you all. To me, that is typically a great indication of a well-designed amplifier. It doesn't get scared. The Class A amplifier never got scared of these complex passages. I felt like the Class D was too, was rushing to get through it, okay? Now, high frequency again, to me, and I, I didn't really expect it, and to be, to be very clear, guys, the Class D amplifier didn't come close to the finesse of the Class A high frequency. You you guys know Class A tends to be very, very clear, very extended uh, on the high frequency, and let's not even go, when talk, and let's not even talk about the mid-range. Mid-range, we know Class A is known for that, and this purity as well. Mid-range, speaking of that, very clear vocals, no question about it, but there is one thing, one thing you guys have to know that you may not have heard through your rig. The mid-range of the Class A amplifier was dead center, hovering, lingering, suspended in the air between the speakers. Mid-range with the Class D was more of a unfocused mid-range. It was there, as a matter of fact, but it wasn't, it was more diffused. It wasn't dead center, pure, clear, focused in front of you. It became a little bigger, somewhat diffused, like I said. Um, and to me, that was a weird feeling that I felt the microphone failed to pick up, okay? If you guys heard it through your rig, then kudos to you because you have a very well put together system. But the mid-range, in my opinion, sounded very synthetic. Again, it was clear. I'm not gonna say it wasn't, but it wasn't organic. It wasn't as if you can reach out and touch it. I felt the mid-range of the Class A amplifier was more real, okay? When it comes to the soundstage, guys, the, in my ears, my system, the Class A just had a little larger soundstage. It was just bigger. The Class D was a little more closed in. Uh, it, it didn't spread its wings as good as the Class A amplifier did. Now, that though now with that said those different qualities that you heard between both um the differences between those different aspects of the presentation um, i can tell you that um at a high level that's what happened in my room what you have to remember is this now the macro dynamics of the class d amplifier are awesome where the Class D amplifier, in my opinion, doesn't come close to the Class A amp, this amplifier that I have here are the micro details, the nuances, the smallest, tiniest things. I also feel as if the Class D, the decay happened, but I saw the decay with the Class A amplifier like a shooting star in the sky where you see it burn, and then slowly it begins to vanish. That is the type of decay I got from the Class A. That was never the decay that I heard through the Class D amplifier. It just went point A and then it just left. And you never followed the shooting star in the sky little by little until eventually it just disappeared. So I don't know if you guys picked up on that at home. If you didn't, could have been to YouTube as well. Um, but the decay is one of the biggest and most noticeable things um, that I found between both. And then lastly, something that unfortunately the mic 100% guys did not pick up. 100% it didn't pick up guys. And that was the sheer energy and force that the Class A monos had in my room. When I went from the Class D amplifier to the Class A monos, the very first impression was and obviously this is after the monos warmed up a bit, was this energy and the feeling that the speakers were now with 93 octane fuel as opposed to 87. Does that make sense? There is much more 
quality what's available for the speakers to do what it what is capable of doing and you sense that that is something you feel unfortunately the mic doesn't allow you to feel that there is that gets lost so you have to be in the room feeling that organic presentation come out and touch you one key aspect that i will say about the class d amplifier that should not go unnoticed guys is it is very two-dimensional it is not a 3D presentation, okay? The 3D presentation, the imaging was far greater through the Class A amp. Now, I will agree, the Class A sounded warmish, a little more relaxed, okay? But it never homogenized each song the way the Class D amplifier did. The um, in my opinion, it just wasn't able to give you that soul that you need with the sound, uh, with the music, with what you're playing. Um, when I sat here, guys, with the Class D amplifier, I felt like the amp was trying to rush through the music and get it over with. Um, and I also felt tempted to leave my, my chair and turn everything off and begin to just watch a movie. Now, I want to make sure you guys understand one thing. You cannot, you cannot assess a component, any component, with just a single song in three minutes and be done with it. If you're gonna do that with audio and you're not, and you are trying to be serious, that's one of the biggest failures, one of the biggest mistakes you can make. If I'm gonna give you an advice right now, don't ever go to listen to a system at your buddy's house or at the store and pretend that in three minutes, you're going to know what that component is doing for you. Fail, you're gonna fail every single time. You need to sit in front of that for 30 minutes to an hour, an hour and a half, if the component is evil, even if the component is even able to give you this satisfaction. For me personally, guys, the Class D amplifier, although again, initial impressions were really wet, were really good, I wasn't able to sit in front of it for long listening sessions. I couldn't sit, I couldn't connect with it. It didn't give me this feeling that I wanted to play the next song, okay? Um, and uh, this is something that unfortunately you guys will not be able to pick up and understand by just clicking on the YouTube video and listening for three minutes. You really can't get that feeling. I couldn't, I listened to it for 10 minutes and I was fine, but when I got to that 30 minute mark, I wasn't looking forward to the next song. I really wasn't. Now, this isn't a knock on the amplifier. So before you guys begin to formulate your, formulate your own conclusions, let me just say this, okay? The presentation of the Class D always felt very in your face at times for me. But some of you guys may love that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Some of you guys may want to go into the forest and be up close to a tree and you want to look at the tree trunk and the leaves and all of that, right? And you want that up in your face. Nothing wrong with that. But maybe some of us want to see the, the entire forest. If you want to know at the end of the road, is this Class D amp from Rouge Audio worth $1,700? 100%. This amplifier is worth $1,700. You have my 100% recommendation. Just again, as long as you are clear that it will not, it is not going to get close to an ultra high end amplifier, sonically speaking. But you have to live with both to understand what the ultra high end amplifier does that the class D amplifier doesn't. Also keep in mind, there is one thing that needs to be said. When you're hearing people say to you, and I'm gonna be very honest here. Hey, Jay, this beats ultra high-end amplifiers. Oftentimes, these are folks that have never lived with an ultra high-end amplifier. So how credible is that comment going to be? Think about that. I could give you that comment. I could, or someone like me. But most folks who own this type of component have never really owned the ultra high end. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to get out, get it out there and say it. There's nothing wrong with that. In conclusion, if you're looking for an affordable amplifier 
that can control your speakers. For instance, Revell Salon 2, I that needs that need a lot of control and grip. I highly recommend this Class D amplifier. If you're looking for finesse, if you're looking for soul, if you're looking for a beautiful presentation that leads to long listening sessions, I do not recommend this amplifier. I think um, that for $1,700, it is an amazing offering, 100% an amazing offering. But unfortunately, I can't say that it begins to nip at the heels of a world-class amplifier. I'm keeping it real. Do not hate me. I'm telling you what I heard from inside the room. This may not necessarily be translated through YouTube, but I want to make sure that you are understanding that there are, there are levels to this. And this amplifier, as good as it is, and it is, and again, one more time, I'm going to say it one more time, it is worth $1,700, 100%, it is worth it. But don't get it twisted. The manufacturer was not building this amplifier aiming at the heavy hitters, at the top end amplifiers. This is a narrative that is typically created, but created by users who want to believe that. It isn't, guys. Just like I said about Tecton, great speakers, but their intention was never to go after the Wilsons, the top end Wilsons and Magicals of the world. They know their place. And I believe this brand knows their place in the audio world. I think it's just end users who are creating these stories about the amplifier being superior than the ultra high end amplifiers. Okay, guys, thank you for your time. I hope this review has served you all well. Um, and stay tuned because my music server has arrived and you're going to be very thrilled to know what it is. Please subscribe. I couldn't thank you all more for helping me grow this channel and giving me all your support.